Welcome to the Green Apple Home. Today I was going to talk to you about a book I just read. Um, kind of like a book review, I guess. It's called Scream Free Parenting. Who is it by? Uh, I think it's Hal. It's like blocked out so I can't tell, but I think it's Hal Runkle. R-U-N-K-E-L. I think it's worth a read. Um, I'll basically summarize what I got out of the book. So the book starts out with talking about parents and how our number one role is to be a calming authority for our children and how a lot of times we react emotionally whether it's screaming or other things um, you don't have to totally scream to be reacting emotionally um, it says not all of us scream at our children all the struggle with reactive behaviors. We may scream, we may manipulate, we may even use violence. On the other hand, we may neglect, we may avoid, we may even withhold love. All these are different examples of emotional reactivity. So they're all different ways, but he labels them all as like screaming because it's us not being in control of ourselves. And so that's mainly what the book is about how we're responsible to our children for how we relate with them. You're the only one that's in control of you. <clears throat> so if you make sure you're behaving, then even when your kids misbehave, then you have a greater chance of positively influencing the situation. And that's what the Scream Free Parenting is all about. Anyways, <laughs> when you're screaming at your kids, you're basically, and, and it kind of made an impact on me because if I ever do raise my voice, at my kids. I think of this now and it helps me kind of remember some of the principles that I learned in this book. But it, he said, I'm um, paraphrasing this, something like when we yell at our kids, we're basically yelling at them, I am not in control of my emotions and I need you to do something so that I can be back in control. And that kind of makes it sound ridiculous. Like our children shouldn't have the power, shouldn't have the power to make or break how we feel. Like we should be independent of what our children are doing. And we should love our children just because they're our children and not because of their behavior, not because they do what we say. That was just my two cents in there. <laughs> I don't think he said that in here. But anyways, um, he went on to say, um, obviously in an airplane, you put on your own mask first and then you help your children. So same in life you go about doing your life and be in control emotionally and that way you can be that calming authority when they do need you. Um, another point that he made was um, had to do with remote controls and how everybody has a remote control. Who do we want our children who do we want in charge of our children's remote control? Well we want them eventually in control of their own remote. That is the point of parenting to raise adults that will be successful and well adjusted and all that jazz. We want them to be in control of their own remote. So when we're, when they're young and they don't really know how to control their remote, um, when you reach for their remote, you're actually giving up the rights to your own remote. So let's see, what did he say? Um, it made more sense the way he said it. Um, if you live by the remote, you die by the remote. Um, if you come to rely on your ability to control others, you are destined for frustration and misery. All they have to do is say no, and you're beside yourself. You're out of control because you're trying to control something you have no business controlling. So we can't control our kids. We want them to make choices because they want to do it, and not because we want them to do it or to please us. He said, when it comes to relationships, you can only hold one remote control at a time. When you grab for someone else's remote, you automatically give them access to your own. What happens when you tell your daughter to pick up after herself and she says no? All she has to do is exert her own choice, a choice not to obey, and everything changes. Now she's begun pushing your buttons on your remote control. So now you're in this like button pushing contest. Well, if you don't react and you stay calm and scream free, then um, the next option that you choose if you're not totally emotionally reacting right off. If you calm and like don't react, then your next cho the next thing that happens is actually a choice and so it'll be more likely to be effective 
will be more likely to help out your relationship, that kind of thing. So that's why I was like, I wish I had more how to, like, how do you not jump in and react to them right away? That's, I think, where I guess probably just by zipping your lip and giving yourself a second or two, maybe counting to 10, I don't know. But the how to, I was like, okay, how do you not become reactive then? Um, you're supposed to be focusing on yourself instead of reacting. So how do we do that? I don't know. Oh, well, this is what he said. You know, how can I, what can I do differently to begin repairing this relationship? He said, by simply stepping back and choosing not to react. React. You assure yourself that your next step will not be reactive, and then you can choose your next step. So it's just choosing not to react. Maybe it's as simple as that. Just I'm choosing not to react. Mm. Okay. So, of course, when we react emotionally, then they, the kids react emotionally, and it just snowballs from there. So, and then the only other thing I think that I wanted to um, talk about was um, patterns, how we fall into these patterns and it's always the, like the same thing, right? So you cannot let those patterns determine your feelings toward and beliefs about your child and his or her future. Despite their limitations and mistakes in the past, we must continually fight for their best character to evolve, fight for their right to always, always change at a moment's notice. So even if like you, they always do this one thing or whatever, you should always look at them as if they are their best selves because that's one way that they will see the best in them. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, basically, just because one day they do something wrong, that doesn't mean that dictates their future and that they're always going to be doing something wrong because, you know, how would we like it if someone labeled us like that? Um, so, in conclusion, <laughs> I feel like this is a book report. In conclusion, you are their biggest influence, and what you think about and say about them will shape them more than any other force in the universe. Champion their ev evolution and watch them grow. So that's a good one. You are their biggest influence. What you think and say about them, they know what you think about them too, even if you're not saying it. By your body language, by the way you react. So we need to truly, honestly, try and have that love for them and not because they're behaving, but because we love them, stay in control emotionally, and then we can work on improving our relationships. I feel like since I've been trying to, you know, do this, that it's it's helped because, you know, there's no point in becoming emotionally and reacting crazy, you know, it doesn't help anyway. So anyways... I mean, that's not to say there's not consequences, but it's being in control and saying, you know what, here are your choices. If you don't do A, B, C, then these are going to be your choices and then following up on those choices. So they're not like off scot-free, but just you're emotionally stable about it. And they will push your buttons, but they really are testing you to see if you'll be ca stay calm. And they want you to stay calm, <laughs> honestly. They don't want you to fly off the handle. Sometimes it feels like they're trying to make you fly off the handle. But, you know, as parents, we need to be better than them. We don't need to revert back to the level of a three or four year old. <laughs> so anyways, I felt like it helped me pick it up if you like and get some tidbits out of it. If not, then rewind this video and watch it again and try and implement at least the principles that I got out of it because it was, it was a pretty good book. Anyways, there's my book review. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Green Apple Home.